Okay, uh, one more video on the topic before I watch Godless Cranium's um, video on my video. Um, on anti-theism itself, I wanted to, I want to make this before I watch it because these are a couple of thoughts that have just occurred to me. Okay, so, another flaw in the anti-theist premise, okay, that's something intrinsic to religion. It's something intrinsic to religion. Now, I understand, as far as I'm concerned, I understand clearly, and I kind of agree with, the anti-theist three main objections to religion. Now, if you're an anti-theist and you're listening to this, there may be more. But as far as I'm concerned, these are the three main ones. These are the important ones. I can't think of anyone, any others past these three. So let's take them one by one. And I'll demonstrate to you quite conclusively that they're not intrinsic to religion at all. At all. Yeah, you see how I stressed, see what I did there? I stressed the little, I stressed the word funny. It kind of sounded jiggy, got a little jiggy with it. No, not liking it. All right, whatever. So what did I do? Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? Oh, because anti-theism, it is not necessarily intrinsic to religion. That's, that's the operating premise. I'm just throwing it out here. It just occurred to me, okay? Three main objections to religion. Correct me if I'm wrong. One, religion is anti-science. Correct? That's objection number one. Now, I'm not saying these are, the, this, all, these are in any order. Objection number one, religion is anti-science. Okay, I'm not anti-science. I'm honest to God, one of the most committed Christians you will ever meet in your entire life, and I'm not anti-science at all all. I'm also not gay for science like a lot of atheists are. A lot of atheists are gay for science. Let's just be perfectly honest. Yes, you are. You know, I don't, I don't get all excited because Carl Sagan's on TV. And I really don't. I don't care about science all that much one way or the other, but I take as my operating starting premise in life. And I always have, probably because I was raised secular. So I got no voodoo in my mind about science versus Christianity. Never have. I was raised secular. When you're raised secular, you take science as, you know, it's just there and it works. I get in my car. It drives. Why? Because the, the scientists are right about the combustion engine. I turn on my computer and it works. Why? Because the scientists are right about the innards of a computer. I do not doubt the scientists unless I am given a good reason to do so. So I, stake as, I take as my starting premise in life that the science is correct unless I'm given a really good reason to do so and I, or, or to believe otherwise. Just like I, I go to a supermarket and buy groceries at the supermarket, I have no reason to doubt that the innards of the su supermarket are not working correctly unless I'm given a really good reason to think, oh, don't go to that supermarket, don't buy food there. Why? Because something weird about that place. As far as I've always experienced the scientific community, I have utilized their inventions and their products and their insights without question. So I do not question the science. First of all, I got no scientific basis to do it. I'm not a scientist and I'm frankly not interested. The reason why I get in my car and drives and it's good enough for me is because I'm really not interested in the combustion engine at all. Not even a little. Honestly, I'm not interested in what makes a computer process. I'm not interested in any of that at all. To leave that to the scientists. But I stay, take as my starting premise that the scientists are correct. Other Christians don't necessarily do that, which means if they say, you know, unless I'm given a really good reason to, to, to not believe them, and as far as I'm concerned that the Bible says otherwise, you've got to circle that square a little differently because I don't necessarily think the Bible says otherwise. In other words, science says the world is however many billions of years old. I take that as my starting premise, period. Unless I'm given a really good reason to believe otherwise. And I'll listen to, you know, the earth is 6,000 years old, but I, I don't find it all that convincing. So that's not really a good reason to believe otherwise. Now, if you're a young earth creationist, don't hear this wrong. Do your thing, man. Go for it. Go for it. You know, preach your, preach your case. That's fine with me. To me, it's not, it's not game-changingly important in terms of my faith at all. All I'm trying to point out to the anti-theist, I'm not anti-science at all. I take as my operating starting premise that the sci what the scientists say is correct. Unless I'm given a really good reason to believe otherwise. And, you know, the Bible saying something different isn't necessarily a really good reason to believe otherwise. I will think 
first thing I'll think is maybe the Bible doesn't say something different. Maybe we're misinterpreting the Bible. That's the first thing I'll think. I'll try to circle the square a different way, but honest to God, I won't really care all that much, one way or the other. Science works. It's good enough for me. I use it. I use its product. Now, number two, they say that, that uh, religious people are, really, are very, very dogmatic, rigid ideology. Okay, any of you who've known me, any of you who know me, I am probably one of the least dogmatic people you actually know, I promise. And I've said this before, I honestly God don't care what you believe when you go to bed at night. How you treat me is how I respond to you, full stop, period. If you're cool to me, I am cool right back, no exceptions. What you believe when you go to bed at night is between you and God or you and nothing. It isn't between me, you, and God. I don't honestly care. Yeah, I, pract I preach Christianity in the public sphere, sure. That's my, that's my thing. <laughs> that's my thing, man. That's what I do. But I, honest to God, don't really believe, don't really care what you believe. Two of my favorite people on this planet are Sirius the Skeptic and Shannon Q. Those are honestly two of my favorite people, and they do not believe what I believe. But they are nice to me constantly, so I like them. Always. Drew, too. Always nice to me. I'm always nice right back. Doesn't matter what he believes. I'm interested. That's why I invite him on the show and start asking him questions. Because I'm interested. I'm curious how they arrived at their conclusions. But I'm not, even when I ask them questions, you see, I'm not ideologically driven. I'm not trying to force them into my conclusions about life. I'm trying to find out how they came to their conclusions. But how I judge them is how they treat me. Period. Full stop. No exceptions. And I know who the cool atheists are, and I get along with them really well. Why? Because I honestly don't care what they believe, how they treat me. Renee treats me well. I got no issues with them. No issues with them. You know? Yes, we, we have a disagreement about, about, you know, whether God exists or not. As far as I'm concerned, that disagreement should be in the public sphere without contention. Should be hashed out publicly without, you know, melodrama. That's what I was trying to, one day, Shannon and I will demonstrate how that exactly happens. Because there's not a lot of melodrama between her and I. There's no contentiousness. Why? Because she's, not, she's nothing to be contentious about. Yeah, we don't, see, we don't agree about something. Well, we can talk about it and see, see what, you know, explore that. That gives us something to talk about. <laughs> so, all I'm trying to point out, okay, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just trying to point out I'm not really rigidly dogmatic at all. I'm as non-dogmatic as some of the non-dogmatic atheists. Sirius the Skeptic is not a dogmatic person at all. Neither is Shannon. And I'm as non-dogmatic as, non as they are. So, it isn't intrinsic to religion, is what I'm trying to point out. It's not intrinsic to religion. I'm evidence to the contrary. And I'm 100% com committed to Christianity. 150. Honestly. Honestly. You know, uh, you know, I take it as a compliment that a lot of you think I'm right about to become an atheist or have said that to you. Yeah, you're right about to be an atheist. I, you know, that's fine. I'll let you believe that. That's, that's cool with me. That's fine. Uh, but I'm just telling you, it's not intrinsic to religion. It's not. I'm a 150% I'm committed Christian and I am not ideological. If you practice Christianity correctly, as far as I'm concerned, you should be less ideological. The more convinced you are that you are actually correct as a conviction... Ironically, paradoxically, the less inclined you are to get in other people's face about it. That's the great mystery of life. If you really honestly believe your beliefs when you shut out the lights and you really honestly believe what you believe, you don't really need to prove it to anybody else. You're convinced that's good enough for you. And that's where I stand with Christianity. I'm completely convinced that I'm operating in the truth. And I'm also convinced if you give me a fair hearing, you'll see that I'm a reasonable human being and I'm operating in at least something close enough to, to reality that you'll be like, yeah, well, okay, there's got to be some truth in it. Why? Because he's, he's, he's cool. <laughs> That's kind of my operating premise. But I'm not d dogmatic about it, one way or the other. Point three, anti-gay. I'm not anti-gay. I had a gay guy on my channel. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my God. Get the smelling salts. <laughs> yeah, gay. I can't believe it. A gay man. And Kyle's pretty darn gay. He's not like, you know, he's not closeted by any long stretch of the imagination. He's pretty, pretty, you know, if you said Kyle, there's a gay boat, there's a big gay boat ride in Long Beach today. He'd be the first one going, get me some tickets. I'm on. <laughs> 
I'm on there. I want to be on that big gay boat ride. Why? Because I'm really honestly gay. So I'm not anti-gay either. Those are, as far as I know, those are the three biggest complaints against Christianity or religion. As far as I know, those are the three biggest complaints. That we're rigidly ideological, dogmatic, that we are uh, anti-gay, and that we're anti-science. I'm not any of the three. Not any of the three. So all I'm trying to point out to you and is that this is not something intrinsic to religious people in general. It's not. There are other sources of these type of behaviors. And one of them is, you know, uh, I'll, go into, I'll go into that in other videos. That's all for now. Amen.